so here's a here's a story uh, that I found on radindymedia.com. Go to radindymedia.com and uh, and and get your news for the day from uh, from from awesome independent sources and content creators. Uh, so this is an it's going down story. Uh, there's a mutual aid group, a mutual aid hub called the Gym in Bushwick, New York, in New York City, and they've basically been operating their uh, activities on the sidewalk. Right? They they were uh, this this real estate company uh, came in and pushed them out of their space. So their storefront, which they had a, a nice little storefront where they could you know conduct their business, which is basically. Uh, having people donate stuff uh, and, uh, you know, uh, being able to say, hey, this person in this community needs help with X, Y, Z. Is anybody available? You know, food deliveries, things of that sort. Um, they got booted out, but the space was still like pretty much rented by them. It was, it was a weird situation, but they but they basically were operating off of the sidewalk uh, and they finally reclaimed their space. Right. Which had kind of been left in shambles. It hadn't been really taken care of because the landlords didn't really fucking care they didn't really give too much of a shit so um yeah you know so so they finally reclaimed it on on july 21st they reclaimed the storefront and then on july 24th uh the nypd shows up uh on the behest of these real estate agents and they kick them the fuck out and and when i mean kick them kick them the fuck out like literally physically kicking them like the act of using one's foot to thrust force upon another thing or person so so let's let's go to the big boards let's let's go let's go check out this twitter video uh this is somebody that was on the scene there it's a short 14 second twitter video check this out so they tackle him. So, so they tackle him to the ground and then these folks come in and all they're trying to do is help this guy because what did he do he just ran out of the store that's not illegal and that's also what they want right they want these people out of the storefront and he did that thing and then they were like tackle him and then check this out. I, I I noticed this in the video too. There's one cop. So this guy, this cop that shows up right here, he shows up, and then what he when they start defending themselves, that guy puts his fists up at somebody. Look, he shoves him, and then and then he's squaring off. Look, he's squaring off. That guy's squaring. These are cops, and they're squaring off against civilians. I almost knocked my fucking water glass over. That would have been a disaster. But look at him. He like, like he's gonna box with him. This is just an average person trying to make sure that you don't put your fucking knee on the back of somebody else's neck. Because guess what? Just because Derek Chauvin is in prison doesn't mean that cops like this don't fucking kill other other people. Because they do, and we've seen plenty of cases where, uh, you know, cops have brutalized and killed other people. But this guy's squaring off, and then I think he realizes what he does, and he backs off, right? Here he, he's squaring off with this guy, and he, and then this guy's just got a camera, and he, he flinches, and he backs off. And then, obviously, this guy said something to him, and then he just goes on to pushing and shoving them off. But here, I'll point this up again. This, there's that cop squaring off with this dude with a with with a fucking mutual aid worker or someone that supports mutual aid whatever it is you don't need to put your fucking fists up and try to knock them down that's what that's what american policing is this is why we talk about defunding the police this is why we this is why we don't we don't want roid, roided out cops in our communities Mutual aids have been helping people across the country nonstop. Even before the pandemic, they were they were they were growing. They were growing in popularity. They were growing in size, um, and they provide ride shares. Right, uh, the Pittsburgh Mutual Aid will post up stuff about, hey, we need this person. To, you know, this person needs a ride to the pharmacy to get their medication. 
uh, and you know, and and some groceries. Does anybody can anybody take them? Blah blah blah. Uh, and they're usually very good about saying like, "Hey, this person will wear a mask." You know, they require they request that you wear the, a mask as well. Blah blah blah. So you know, they're very they they take safety into into uh, consideration. They provide food. Like I said, they do food deliveries. The Pittsburgh restaurant workers right now uh, just sent out an email claiming that uh, saying that they're looking for a food delivery person. And it's and they're paying 21 bucks an hour. A mutual aid organization is paying somebody 21 bucks an hour. Does DoorDash do that? Does Grubhub pay you 21 bucks an hour? The answer is no, they don't do that. That's obviously you guys can't. I'm, I'm sure some of you responded, but I, you know, because of the internet uh they also provide medicine like they help people get their medicine and stuff they help people uh with financial assistance just straight up financial assistance through donations and this real estate company right now in new york that is that is evicting the gym out of their space and keeping them out of their space and using cops to do so um is is preventing people in this community from receiving help that's what they're doing all for the sake of making profits. That's it. They don't fucking care, right? It's not like this real estate company is like, well, we're gonna build a, we're gonna build a, a, a cafeteria, and and a bunch of these corporations are gonna just donate a fuck ton of food every single day, and we're gonna feed the community, okay? And we need this space. No, they're not doing that. They probably want to turn it into some fucking boutique store that half the people that live in the community haven't heard of. Uh, can't really have doesn't really have any use for and can't afford to shop in anyway that's what that's what these real estate companies are doing the fear of these mutual aids and a lot of socialist actions is uh is because they th these like mutual aid and socialism prove that we don't need capitalism to live or survive that's what it does the concept of mutual aid is completely outside the the paradigms of capital of acquiring capital of acquiring profits right it that's not why people people take part in mutual aid it's not why people start mutual aid groups they start mutual aid groups because they want to fucking help people and if they make money, great. You know, obviously some of these mutual aids are making enough money to and and it's you know to to pay people for their services, which is great because now they now now they can uh, have a dedicated person to run food and do grocery shopping and buy meals for people or pack pack meals and deliver it to people. That's something else mutual aids do. They show that a capitalist government will not help you. Mutual aids have helped people far more than this capitalist government that we have. How far did a $1,200 check go when in the city of New York, I bet that's your rent. In, in Washington, D.C., that is one month of rent. That's it. That's all you got. You got maybe one month of rent in most cities. The rest of it, figure it out. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That's what these politicians said with that 1200 bucks. But here are mutual aid groups that, you know, and, and people during the pandemic that worked for these mutual aid groups weren't getting paid. It was on a volunteer basis. And they grew to the point where some of them are now able to pay dedicated employees to to do the job to make sure the communities are taken care of. Here's another one. Chicago, Fred Hampton Jr. Uh, put out a fridge with free food along with a free library and a, uh, a, a fresh, fresh vegetable garden in Oak Park, which is a food desert. Um, there is massive food inequality and food insecurity in this neighborhood. And Fred Hampton Jr., guess who he's related to, uh, is carrying forward the actual true legacy of the Black Panther Party. And 
you know, bringing back some of their survival programs. This is fridge plugged into the into the into Fred Hampton's home sits on the front yard and it's open 24 seven. You have anonymity. So, you, you know, you don't have to feel embarrassed that you need to come to this fridge to get, you know, maybe some groceries. And then people replace it. I know for a fact that uh, the the DSA in Norfolk, Virginia, did that. My 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 friends uh, uh, made made that happen, and it's a wild success down there. The pantry goes empty, and then all of a sudden, more food comes in, and then it goes empty again, and all of a sudden, more food comes in. People help each other. That's mutual aid. Fred Hampton Jr. is doing the same thing that my friends in Norfolk did, part of the DSA. This is this is how things are supposed to fucking run. If you if you have a system that that champions poverty, then this this is how it it gets fixed. Not through corporate bailouts, not through bank bailouts, not through starting more wars, not through talking about quarter one was uh, you know what uh, ten percent higher than no one gives a fuck whether your quarter was better than the last one. They care about being able to feed their fucking family. But this is why billionaires are out of touch, right? Psychologically, they've never had to struggle or survive for this stuff, um, or they don't have to. You know, even if they did, it's like that that era is long gone. And that's probably part of their trauma, too. You know, some billionaires uh, that, that didn't come out of trust funds they're so afraid of going back to any level of poverty that they can't see that even if you have if you have 25 billion and and you reduce your wealth to 10 billion you're still fucking richer than god you know why because jesus was a socialist and would never actually want to be a billionaire he would probably give a lot of that wealth back to the community and keep a little for himself so that he can feed himself and house himself and clothe himself. So yeah, when people say billionaires are richer than God, it's because the, the, the mythic figure of God would never want to fucking be a billionaire because being a billionaire would mean that you would have to be callous, cruel, step on people and, and give up your own humanity psychologically that's i mean they've they've done studies they're like they don't relate to people they they're they've kind of looked beyond their own humanity to something different right they're they're not technically homo sapiens they're homo douchebagus that's that's i'm um, that's science fred hampton jr carrying forward dsa in norfolk carrying forward the true legacy of the black panther party AOC's not doing that. Bernie Sanders ain't doing it. Rashida Tlaib, the squad, they're not doing it. Where where are they starting food food uh, free refrigerators with free food? Food pantries across the country. Are, is AOC going out to Bushwick, fucking telling the NYPD to back the fuck off and let these people operate their mutual aid out of the building that they're fucking paying rent in? Absolutely not. She couldn't even show up to the Medicare for All rally, which is something that she fucking championed. These politicians don't do anything until we fucking make them do it. Again, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because that's <laughs> that's the next segment. Mutual aids, man. Mutual aids are carrying forward uh, the 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 actual legacy of things like the Black Panther Party, Martin Luther King Jr., the the labor movement from the early 1900s. What's the core tenet of it? It's solidarity, not charity. It's an economy that is run on compassion, logic, and actual freedom. Under capitalism, money is a limiter. It's not a. It's it's it, 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 it's a limiter. It's not freedom. If you don't have money, you can't do certain things. Under socialism, that's not a problem. If you don't have money, if you hit some hard times, you're not gonna lose your lose your home, right? Access to shelter, access to health care. You won't you won't lose that. Because the community around you will be like, hey, we got you. Don't worry about it. 
guess what? Down the street, we have a place that's going to give you food. Guess what? The people around your neighborhood, we're going to rally together to help you cover rent. And actually, if we had a socialist system, if you, you know, under, under, under socialism, if you talk to a landlord and say, hey, I fell on some hard times, I've actually lost a significant amount of my income, I'm not sure what to do, they'd be like, don't worry about it. This is why you paid rent for all these years. Now, now, now it's our turn to take care of you for a little bit. Don't worry about it because that's what an economy run on compassion looks like. An economy run on capital looks like people getting kicked out of their homes and winding up homeless during, during let's not forget we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And homeless communities have uh, a, a higher rate of spread because guess what? You think they're getting vaccinated? You think they have the they have the access to get vaccinated? I'm going to use a Republican term here. You think or and really a Democratic term too. Do you think they have the access to get vaccinated? Can they can they go online and register to get vaccinated? You know how homeless people would get vaccinated when a doctor decides to just do it. And in Florida there was a doctor that was doing it out, out of compassion, out of out of the fact that he didn't want to see homeless people suffer from this disease, so he was helping them with PPEs, helping them with uh, uh, taking care of themselves to make sure they don't fall sick. <laughs> and the Florida cops arrested that dude in front of his own house. That's what capitalism looks like. What's that meme? Uh, socialism is the uh, the fire department coming out to to put out your fire. Uh, capitalism is the insurance company denying your claim. Yeah, that's this is it. This is why we need more mutual aid. This is why people should be supporting mutual aid. This is why if you if you're worth a damn, you would tell the NYPD to go fuck themselves. This is why we should be championing to defund the goddamn police so they stop brutalizing and bullying people that are trying to help a community in need. Why? So you can get a fucking pottery bond or anthropology in bushwick who asked for that fucking nobody let's look at your comments <laughs> after i just yelled um aiden aiden's one of the people that uh put up the uh the is it is it a food pantry am i is that the accurate term for it uh, in Norfolk there. Uh, there's two of them now, which is awesome. There you go. There you go. It's expanding. It's growing. That's how successful these are. They're growing. Uh, this is getting more lumber to build more. Look at that. And guess what Aiden's not doing? He's not trying to franchise it like it's a goddamn Starbucks. <laughs> Free food pantries. Boom. That's how mutual aid works, people. Right on. Thank you for tuning in, you guys. Over on the Rockfin, uh, Holly says there is life outside work. Absolutely, yes. Uh, oh, Holly brought up uh, like food not bombs and uh, and the homeless encampments. Yes, yes, food not bombs. Uh, I'm I finally uh, <laughs> Steve Poinkinen has been telling me he's going to get me Keith and McHenry's uh, contact information for a while since I did the homeless show. <laughs> Uh, the homelessness show that I did way back uh, in February. We've been talking about getting this, uh, his contact information. So I finally got Keith McHenry's um, contact information. So I, I'm, I'm going to try to get him on the podcast. But uh, uh, Keith has been arrested for feeding people. And one of the one of the things they said is, well, feeding people is unsanitary because after people eat, they poop. It's like, oh, man, finally. Finally, the government has come out and confirmed uh, everybody poops, you guys. We're all just a bunch of poopers, and that's why you shouldn't eat. And that is uh, a statement from the United States government. <laughs> Don't eat. It'll cause poop. Stop eating, you guys. That's all That's all America's trying to do right now. Is there's so much poop in the world. That we, America has to create poverty and homelessness to prevent the pooping. We're just uh, we're just gonna be covered in our own shit. 
Uh oh, what happened? Did I lose it? Okay, am I back? I'm back. Looks like I'm back. Um, sorry, it it, it the Rockfin screen blanked out for a second. I was like, fuck no. Uh, Holly says, uh, brutal protect and serve. Uh, mutual aid is more effective and real. And and there, I, I mean, the results are right in front of us. They're right in front of us. Healthcare and housing are rights. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And again, mutual aid sees that. Mutual aid sees that for what it is. Uh, and and that's what they do. They try to help people to ensure that they have food, shelter, uh, water, health. And if we can figure out a way to get uh, internet for people through mutual aid, that would be fucking awesome. That that is unfortunately because of the infrastructure of the way thing that would be a little bit difficult to do. You'd have you'd, you'd probably have to push the the city to do it. But that but that also you could you could have big municipal broadband rallies so that more cities get municipal broadband. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out, and please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that, please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often, uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before. But I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates all over the place, so uh, and I'm very, very excited that these live events are coming back. But I'm also going to be doing virtual shows. Uh, they're going to be less frequent, but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well. So don't worry. We're going to be doing some virtual shows coming up. Uh, I'm also going to be putting out new Forkful of Noodles content as well. Uh, so don't worry, those those things are not going away uh, just because the, 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 the live touring is is back. Uh, but again, you can go get all that de uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can check out all my stand-up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events. Uh, you know, when, when I come through your town. So uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy, everyone.